Coming to you from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by way of Stone Mountain, Georgia, birthed by the great state of South Carolina, is the Bryant Land Country Podcast, your place for any and everything in hunting, fishing, sports, and outdoor related, with heavy doses of randomness, guests, and an all-around good time. Here's your host, proud Gamecock, South Carolina Forever, AB3. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Bryant Land Country Podcast. I'm your host, AB3. Glad you guys could join me for another podcast this week. Remember, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, leave us that five-star rating and leave us a review. Otherwise, you can get the podcast on our website, bryantlandcountry.com, or anywhere you consume your podcast audio. We have a great show this week for you. Last week, I did a podcast basically talking about my first hunt, how my first hunt went down. If you want to go back and listen to that, if you haven't already, it turned out to be a really good podcast. Like I said, just talking about You know, the first time I went hog hunting down in South Georgia, which was the first hunt that I had really ever been on, and I also killed a very nice hog with my bow. Um, At that time, I think one thing I did leave out of that podcast, at that time it was a bear cruiser, bear archery cruiser. That was the first bow that I had. Uh, Nice pass-through shot in the neck of a pretty good size uh, hog. But we had a good time. Uh, Like I said, go back and listen to that podcast called My First Hunt. Now, when I posted the pictures uh, or picture collage from that hunt, I asked people to, uh, you know, chime in and talk about, you know, their first hunt and talk about what it was like, you know, what memories you have or what um, stood out to you uh, from your first hunt. And I got some uh, pretty good responses, got some really great responses, actually. And I'm going to take the time, I'm going to read a few of them, uh, just because, you know, like I said, they were really good um, and great stories. So the first one here is from Pat Straw 275. Pat Straw 275. I took my son out for the very first time when he was seven. Now, every night before I'm prepping in the garage, he says, Dad, I can go, right? They'll have those memories when we've moved on to eternal rest. That is from Pat Straw 275. Man, let me tell you, you are absolutely right. Those memories will live on after we're gone, and hopefully they'll pass them down, you know, to their next generation or pass it down to the next generation, you know, down to their kids and their kids pass it down to their kids and so on and so forth. Um, I know you said you took him the first time he was seven. I'd love to know how old he is now, but either way, Pat Straw, 275, that is awesome. Another one that I have here, man, those hog hunts with dogs are exciting. This is from T underscore McKinnon underscore. T underscore McKinnon underscore. Man, those hog hunts with dogs are exciting. My oldest is grown and serving as a soldier now, but our first hunt was in North Georgia for squirrel when we was four. I don't know which was more exciting for him, looking for squirrels or being able to potty on a tree. (laughs) He must have went to the bathroom 30 times on that hunt. I had the privilege to share a first hunt with his younger brothers this year and this year his sister. That is from T underscore McKinnon underscore. <laughs> that is pretty daggum funny. Um, yes, one of the best parts of being out in the wilderness is going to quote unquote potty where you have to take a pee or, you know, number two or whatever out there in the woods. Um, there have been a couple of times I've been stuck out there and, you know, had some uh, some good food from uh, one of the local establishments, you know, in town that um, kind of ran through me by the time I got back out in the woods. And, you know, you just got to take care of business. You got to do what you got to do. He said also that his oldest is grown and serving as a soldier now. Thank your son for his service. Uh, we really appreciate that as well. And thank you for sending in your memory, T underscore McKinnon. I appreciate that. Uh, last one I got, actually, no, not the last one, but another one that I got here is from T 
TWS Knives. TWS Knives. He said, man, first hunts are awesome. I was four or five years old. Daddy took me out predator hunting in North Arizona. Now, that's an experience there. I can still, I can still hear the old Johnny Stewart rabbit distress call. Watch the old man call a fox in from over a half mile. His Seiko Vixen made quick work of that fox, and I was hooked. Hunted every year since that, and that was almost 30 years ago. Man, that's what I'm talking about. I love longevity. I love when people talk about longevity in uh, doing hunts. Uh, TWS Knives, congratulations on hunting for 30 years, I should say. Man, started out four or five years old, predator hunting in northern Arizona. Here's another one. Chase underscore Lewis underscore Marshall. My first hunt was for raccoons in 1999 on the Brazos River bottom in southwest Texas with plot hounds. Hmm. All right. I apologize. I don't know what plot hounds are. I'm assuming they're a type of dog. But first hunt for raccoons in 99 on the Brazos River in south Texas. Left that sunset and got back at 3 a.m. School was rough on the next day. <laughs> I can't imagine school being rough on the next day. Good grief, man. Uh, entire day of hunting coons. I tell you what, I need to get out and start trapping coons. I think you guys may have heard me talk about it on one of the earlier podcasts, but I swear I think the coons are the reason why my turkey season was in the pits this year. Uh, but congratulations to you, Chase underscore Lewis underscore Marshall. First hunt for coons in 1999 in South, Southeast Texas. Uh, another thing, too, about Southeast Texas, I've looked at land down there uh the last couple of years and just haven't quite found the right spot that i would like to you know pull the trigger and make the purchase but i know every time we go to texas for work man i love it i've looked at like i said several pieces of land down in texas just haven't found you know the right uh the right plot to pull the trigger so uh, Chase underscore Lewis underscore Marshall, I don't know if you're still down there in Texas, but um, if you're listening to this and you come across um, any sweet deals for land or any of my Texas listeners that come across, you know, any sweet deals for land, I'm not looking for anything huge. I don't need a huge ranch. You know, that's definitely out of my tax bracket, but, you know, a nice 10, 15, 20 acre plot somewhere in Texas that I can maybe use as a vacation spot or you know, an alternate hunting spot, you know, down there in Texas, that would be awesome. So if you guys know anything about that, hit a brother up. Okay. Now, if you listened last week, you know, I told you guys that a lot of these summer podcasts was just going to be me talking about different things, different parts of hunting, you know, things that I like, things that I don't like, you know, strategies, tips, little things that have helped me along the way that hopefully can help somebody else a lot of you seasoned guys may already know these things so you might be like you know dang you just figuring that out well yeah i'm just figuring that out because i've only been hunting for about five years now you know i wasn't uh you know born into this but you know i've told that story many times so far here on the podcast so i'm not going to bore you with that but today I want to talk about food plots and I want to talk about my experience with food plots and baiting. Now, I hunt primarily here in Georgia and up until last year, you know, Georgia had this thing where Northern Zone, which was basically Metro Atlanta all the way up, you know, to the Tennessee border, Northern Zone hunters, we couldn't bait. Southern Southern Zone hunters could bait for deer and hogs well last year at the 11th hour when i say 11th hour right before hunting season started they passed the law you can hunt deer and hogs over bait in the entire state of georgia now i know a lot of people didn't like that there was a lot of folks that were against baiting and the you know, research I've done and just being in chat groups and stuff, no matter whether it's in Georgia or whatever state, when it comes to baiting deer, a lot of people just frown on it. They think it's, you know, cheating, that ain't hunting. You know, everybody loves to talk about what hunting is or isn't. You know, that ain't hunting and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. 
I personally am all for baiting and feeding deer and drawing them in and kind of, you know, guiding them into an area in order to make a kill. I have absolutely no problem with that. My point is, you know, baiting is to me a good thing, especially if you can feed them a premium deer feed other than corn. I know a lot of people just like to go out and throw out a bag of corn or fill up a feeder with corn and just kind of let the deer do their thing. My problem that I've had with corn and the thing that I don't like about it is it attracts too many daggum raccoons and squirrels. You know, I'm interested in growing deer, attracting deer and holding deer, you know, on the property that I hunt. So I think, you know, baiting is fine. I think it's awesome. Um, I shot a doe, you know, um, close to one of my feeders last year. It's a decent sized doe. First doe I took on my hunting property. Um, so I was very proud of that. And, you know, there were a lot of people that tried to poo poo on it. Well, you couldn't kill a deer if it wasn't for corn and you couldn't kill a deer if it wasn't for baiting. I honestly don't give a crap. Um, and crap is really not the word that I wanted to use, but because I like to try to keep these family friendly, I will say I don't give a crap about what other folks think. You do what's best for you. You do what helps you. Okay. And as long as it's legal, I have no problem with it. Baiting food plots. Now I've done some of my own work with food plots as well. You know, I've planted first year I had my property. I planted a food plot. Uh, it came up okay. You know, I just did, you know, the basic throw and grow, you know, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. I wanted something that I could get down relatively easy without a lot of implements. Uh, so I did a throw and grow. I won't mention the brand name because, like I said, if the brand name wanted to put their name behind the Bryant Land Country podcast, then maybe we can talk. However, I put out Throw and Grow. It grew. It died pretty quickly, even though I did, you know, everything that I was supposed to do as far as liming your soil, giving it, you know, the uh, fertilizer and trying to make it, you know, work. But I had minimal success. You know, the deer found it. They came to it. Turkeys came to it. They found it. They loved it. The first year I had a plot, it was mostly, uh, like I said, Throw and Grow type clover. And the first year I had that plot, man, the turkeys came out there and killed it. I mean, it was amazing. Haven't had that much success since then. I don't know if it's because of the coons. Um, Quite possibly could be. Could be the brand of uh, mix that I was using. But, you know, the whole thing with food plots is to give the deer, you know, something, an attraction, something to hold them, you know, on your on your property while also feeding them and giving them something nutritious where you can grow, you know, nice sized does and grow, you know, those big bucks. And the good thing about food plots is it don't matter, you know, what size, you know, you can plant like a big two, three acre plot, or you can plant little small plots. I plant small plots just because they're easier to manage. Uh, Right now, I think I'm running about two plot. Well, this year I'm going to run about two plots. And one thing that I'm going to switch over and I'm going to do differently is I'm going to use some uh, seed that was manufactured locally. Well, relatively locally. I got it from South Carolina. Um, I'm going to try that this year as opposed to the throw and grow type, you know, deal. You know, I think you may have seen pictures on the Bryantland Instagram. If you are following, you know, at official Bryantland on Instagram, if you're not following at official Bryant Land on Instagram. You need to be. But if you are following me, you may have seen the pictures. I got a Groundhog Max. I put it on the back of my ATV and I dissed up a plot a couple weeks ago. Uh, when I go back out to my property here in a few days, I'm going to disc up another area and get that ready. So I'm really looking forward to the new seeds that I am going to use this year. Um, you know, I'm going to post pictures and stuff. That's why I say make sure you're following along on at official Bryant Land. Um, Bryant Land on Facebook, you know, at three Bryant Land on the Twitter. I'm going to post pictures, you know, kind of document, you know, my food plot journey. Because I know for a lot of people, food plots are hard. And even for me, you know, I haven't quite had the nice, green, luscious 
food plots that you see pictures of that you see a lot of people have but I think part of that is because you just got to take the time and go step by step and do things the right way make sure you got your soil test you know you can't stress that enough you know testing your soil making sure the pH is correct uh, before you just start throwing down seeds Uh, using a good quality seed I would say is you know top of the list Obviously, after you got the right kind of soil and you got your pH where it needs to be, you know, use a good quality seed. Like I say, these local seeds that I'm using this year, we're going to put them to the test. Uh, I know a lot of hunters in South Carolina swear by them. uh, So we're going to see if they do the same thing down here in Georgia. Uh, The other thing, you know, is that I think may have hindered, you know, my food plot success in past years is weather. And that's something that I got no control over. You know, I'm I'm not a farmer. I don't have a big irrigation system or a big field, you know, where I can water, you know, my food plots, you know, however I want to or on a schedule, you know, that I want to. You know, unfortunately, I don't have that. So you're relying on mother nature. God, I can't talk. Relying on mother nature. Remain relying Jesus, and I'm not going to edit this out. I mean, I'm just having a hard time getting my point across. The point that I'm trying to make is you have to rely on Mother Nature. You have to rely on the good Lord up above to bring water, rain, you know, things that, you know, the food plot needs. And uh, quite frankly, the last couple of years uh, in Georgia, it's been hot. It's been a drought, not really or drought from the standpoint that you know you didn't get the rain that i needed to make my food plots grow so hopefully this year we're going to have a turnaround it's going to be different like i said we're going to plant a couple of plots we're going to put uh, a couple of um, ground blinds around those plots you know try to find a strategic place to uh put those ground blinds so where we can get you know on the deer as they're coming into the plot you know, get a nice uh, distance and then get a, a great bow shot on those deer. So, yeah, man, that's kind of my plan this year for food plots, you know, down on my little paradise that I call Bryant Land. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Like I said, I'm going to post pictures. You know, I might do a couple videos here and there just to kind of document, you know, the success or the not success. Uh, I won't say failure. Um, because, you know, maybe it'll be minimal success. So we're going to document that, you know, over the summer and then over the hunting season coming up. Uh, When I post the uh, notification for this podcast, I would like for you guys to tell me, you know, what's your plan for food plots? What are you guys doing for food plots coming up this fall do you have a big plot do you have like a little small kill plot do you like using throw and grow do you get your implements on your atv or whatever and disc up your field and make you know little small plots maybe around like a licking branch or something like that whatever you guys are doing i want to hear about it so make sure like i say you comment on the post for this podcast on my instagram at official bryant land on instagram or you can send me an email ab3 bryantland at gmail.com or you know you can hit us up on twitter at three bryantland facebook bryantland i mean you know all the avenues that you guys can get in touch you know with me and get in touch with the bryantland brand like i said however hit us up i want to know you know what you guys are using for plots now next week on the podcast i am not quite sure what my next topic is going to be Um, I'll probably figure that out here in the next couple of days. But if you got a suggestion, feel free to use those avenues that I just gave you uh, to reach out to me and make a suggestion. Whether, like I said, it's, uh, you know, ab3bryantland at gmail.com or probably at official Bryantland on Instagram is the best way. But, you know, whatever way that you want to reach out to us, reach out to us. Let me know what you think the topic next week may be. It might even be an interview next week. Um, I got a couple of folks that I'm trying to line up that I want to talk to. Um, So we might have an interview next week. But if not, 
you know, like I said, if you guys send me some suggestions, you know, we'll get it on a topic and we'll hash it out. Now, before I get out of here on this podcast, I want to just say thank you to everyone that has supported the Bryantland Country Podcast so far. Remember, if you're listening to us on the Apple Podcast, send a, or give us a five star rating and then leave you know, a nice review so other people can come in and see about this badass podcast that's called the Bryant Land Country Podcast. And I know I just said, you know, give us a five star review. We've earned a five star review. So please, if you listen to the podcast and we've earned a five star review, make sure you hit, hit those five stars on the Apple Podcast. Make sure you're checking out BryantLandCountry.com. You know, we got a shop on there, we got merch. Go pick you up some Bryantland merch. We got some other great content on our BryantlandCountry.com page. Follow us on Instagram, at official Bryantland. That's where we're most active at. Uh, we will appreciate, you know, any kind of follow, any kind of comments, feedback, all of that stuff. We like to engage with our listeners. We like to engage with our fans of the Bryantland brand. So make sure you're doing that, whether it's on Facebook at Bryantland or on the Twitter at 3 Bryantland. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up and get on out of here. I got some more stuff I need to get done today. But thank you for listening to the Bryant Land Country Podcast. And make sure you come back here next week for another great episode of the Bryant Land Country Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Bryant Land Country Podcast, hosted by AB3. Please leave us a positive review and five-star rating on iTunes. Be sure to check out our podcast section on our website, bryantlandcountry.com, for previous podcasts. Check us out on Instagram at Official Bryant Land and Twitter at 3 Bryant Land. This has been an AB3 Media Production. Join us next time for another edition of the Bryant Land Country Podcast. <laughs>